Greetings and welcome back to Hive Swap Friendship. The last three little stretches remain. Indeed, this journey has been a long one so far. Quite. Well, sort of. Medium like that, I would say, honestly. <laughs> it's gonna end up being, what, in 19 hours or so? As I expected at the start? But anyway, anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. For now, it is time for the second part of Volume 17 of Teen and Tech Acerbic. We met the goth kid, who, you know, has a lot of thoughts about her. And now let's meet the, uh, apparently the jock one, who looks like, oh, she looks very buff at least. Ah yes, this is it, fellas. Another night of laughter and camaraderie. Another night of joy and communion with some totally normal teens who never... I'm <laughs> just kidding, who idiot. Uh, you're still an Atelier. You. you just know one of these miserable chickle foxes around here somewhere. Waiting for the next right moment to inundate you with another disgusting dose of friendship. Who is going to be the author of your destruction on this accursed evening? Oh, it's going to be Nikke Mula. Mula. A fighting champion. Look at that. Look at those, look at those guns. Yeah. <laughs> oh, starring already. We're in the circus. Dim lights, the din of a roaring crowd, and the smell of horribly overpriced and nauseating concessions. Even across galaxies, timelines, and perhaps even universes, there is still something deeply familiar about the sporting arena. Smash a mother honking face in! Why not say motherfucking face in? Huh? Well, I guess they don't. I guess they don't fuck, technically. I don't know how they reproduce practically, since they go in like a spawning pit or something. I guess they don't fuck trolls. I mean, no. Eh. There's also something deeply familiar about sports fans. Well, <laughs> they don't change, ever, anywhere. Amicia's here. Ah, such a shame having seats next to the purples. They can be so crude and boorish, don't you agree? I hope it wouldn't be nearly this loud. Usually. You find yourself here, attending a wrestling show, uh, a display of muscular theatre, to use the troll terminology, thanks to the benevolence of one Amicia Erden. She won the tickets in a raffle and excitedly invited you to come along. That's nice, fair. I mean, this makes sense, there's lots of blood here. You agreed with some reservations that you quickly expressed. She was quite disappointed, but eventually agreed not to kidnap you and keep you locked up as a living paint jar since your bodies, buddies and all. What a sweet friend. Yeah, not kidnapping someone. <laughs> I you have to admit though, muscular theatre isn't really your thing. It's as over the top and ridiculous as human wrestling, which makes it perfectly entertaining enough, but it's also, well, a lot more violent. Really? Hmm. I mean, of course it's a bit more violent, but wrestling is already quite violent. I mean, it's mostly fake violence because it's theatre, but this is they kill here. They, they, they have people killing themselves all the time over here, or each other, whatever. Participants aren't expected to die, as far as you can tell, but you've already seen a few get wheeled off on futuristic hover stretches with injuries you're not sure they could survive. I mean, people die in fucking like rap performances because they're so enraptured by the rap that they just start killing everyone. Oh gosh, she nearly got impaled there! Every match tonight is taking place within a chain link cage. Spikes surrounded on both the outside and inside and jet out occasionally from the places where the wires cross. The overall design, in addition to ensuring maximum bloodshed, seems to keep both the wrestlers inside and the audience out. Ironically, it might be safer this way. The current combatants are some old of blood named the Huntress and the purple blood calling himself Culpits. Interesting to you, there is nothing clown-like about him at all. It is almost conspicuous how unclownly he is, if only due to the absolutely ridiculous amount of clown content you have imbibed in the presence of other purples. The two fighters appear to be nearly evenly matched. The olive troll ducks and weaves mid blindingly fast punches from the purple, slashing at him with grandiose arm gestures, trying to overwhelm him with a barrage of small attacks. Every one of his punches hits hard enough to knock her down, but she always springs up before he can land a second hit. She's incredibly steady on her feet, and quicker than he. In fact, you get the distinct impression that the olive troll is holding back, presumably so as to avoid inciting the crowd. Thus far, you have not seen a single match in which the lower-blooded opponent triumphed over a higher-blooded foe. 
I must admit, this match is a lot more intense than I was expecting. But I hope it ends soon. There's supposed to be a really famous muscular theatrist performing next. Her name is Nikki Mula and she hasn't ever lost a fight. I heard she even beat a violet blood once. Nikki Mula, huh? Now that's a name you could befriend. Because the name. She must be as big a deal as Amicia makes her out to be, because she used her real name instead of some ridiculous made up nonsense, like John Cena or Hulk Hogan. <laughs> oh, look, look, he got her! He got her! You flinch. The purple lord finally managed to get his quarry in his clutches, and he lifts her up by the face, digging his fingers into her the skull until you hear a sickening crunch, and she collapses to the ground, panting heavily. She can't bring herself back up to her feet and the announcer calls that match to uproarious applause from the audience. Two trolls enter the cage and start dragging her out, while the winner basks in the audience's affection. The yellow blood looks like she'll probably live, but she's got a dent in her face that probably isn't coming out, ever. Uh, all of a sudden you think you really need to go uh, get a bathroom. Uh, you mean use the snack? Uh, you mean, uh, you'll be right back. Okay, come back soon. This fight is giving me all sorts of ideas for a new painting. You quickly make a break for it, jostling your way through the stands and toward the exit of the arena. But before you make it, a voice calls out to you. Some slick-haired and slick-finned violet-blooded guy, wearing a full suit with a stacky flame pattern on it. Oh god. Are you alien? Me, you ask, pointing to yourself nervously. No, the other alien! You swing your head around widely, looking for the other alien. This bit plays out predictably for a while before you both get on the same page which is that you are the alien whose attention he wants. You looking to make a little extra buck? No, not really. You never spent all the money that we won with Azdaja. Okay, how about fame? Frankly, you're probably already too famous for your own good. Uh, friendship? <gasps> ah shit, yeah! Sighing with relief, the troll leads you backstage whilst explaining that he's a promoter for this wrestling league. One of the trolls that was supposed to perform tonight was eaten by some plant called the Troll Devouring Catchy Grabber. As such, famed muscular theatrist Nikki Mula has been left with nobody to fight. You will be that nobody, er, somebody. An alien bringing all sorts of media attention and controversy, which of course means big bucks for him, and friendship for you. Nikki is so friendly, she says, in a tone so insincere that even your French faddled brain refuses to believe it. <laughs> it's okay, you've met worse. <laughs> He takes you into a back room which seems to be full of performers waiting for the turn on stage. There are all sorts of trolls here, muscular and sweat soaked, blue blooded more often than not. One troll in particular stands out to you, from a severe expression to her softly pulsating robotic leg, to the fact that she's the only troll with a fully illustrated sprite. <laughs> oh, that too. Wait, uh, robotic leg? Don't see the robotic side of it. She's currently doing bicep curls with a sort of spiked weight, puffing the exertion. When the promoter approaches, she looks up with a scowl. I'm busy! He begins to explain that he has brought a new challenger for her to face, but she cuts him off and stands up. Uh, she isn't as tall as you expected, but damn if she isn't dense, packing more brawn than any other troll you've met. Do you want to know what happens, sister, to people who disturb my preparations? Do you want to experience? The bone-crushing, torso-shattering impact of these ladies right here. She flexes. God, those muscles are huge. The promoter tells her that she really doesn't need to keep up the act. There's no cameras back here. She gives him a stern look which distinctly suggests that she has never dropped kayfabe in her life and has no intention of starting now. Make it quick. The promoter makes it quick. So let me get this straight. You expect me? Me? to perform with this, this thing. She seems less impressed, which you find reasonable. Magnificent legs aside, you don't really look like the wrestling type. Don't you dare insult me, sister. I'd rather you pull the rusty from the audience than subject me to this humiliation. Oh, but you are more than just an audience member. Frail that you may be, you have the heart and soul of a wrestler. What? No, we don't. You have long, much longer than about five minutes, you thoroughly assure her. Waited for an opportunity opening such as this, to reveal your true passion to the world, to come alive on stage and grapple and tumble with the best of them. For eons have you thirsted for the chance to sing the song of sinew, the hymn of heft, the melody of muscle, 
or that you could be blessed by the opportunity to live the life of the athlete, to perform alongside your hero, to show the world that you too love to do the muscle thingy, uh, that you might just... Okay, I get it! She yawns over at the promoter and then back to you. It does seem surprising articulate for a lesser being, but it's really for a butt clenching, flash braiding, knuckle blistering, muscle rippling, smack down from up down. Yes. Let's lie and get killed. <laughs> you nod your head confidently. Blister my knuckles and abrade my flesh, you say. Let's get this smack down ready. Start. You've got guts at least. She turns to the pumpkin and gives him a curt nod. The match is on! Then she turns back to you. Now, sister, we need to discuss the show. I will make all the decisions. You will respond adequately to the storyline I present. It will be thus. The alien invader challenged me in an exhibition match to topple the mightyarchy. They fight violently and show an entertaining display of strength. But in the end, as is right and proper, the noble hue of the Hemo Spectrum prevails again. Yeah! She starts flexing and showing off for an imaginary audience before turning back to you. I mean, I can appreciate the never-ending performance. That's good. That's that's respectable. Any questions, sister? Uh, yes, actually, do you do have a couple questions. First, will he die? No, unless you're particularly disgustingly weak, in which case, maybe. Such is the risk we take, we who indulge in the most noble and dignified of sports. I was willing to give up my leg for the craft. Is your life such a heavy price to pay for a tale that will transcend us and be remembered in annals of muscular history? Is it, sister? Well, it's rhetorical. <laughs> right. Secondly, when she says exhibition match, it is a muscular theater term, referring to a match stage for entertainment that does not affect one's ranking on the flex ladder. We will not be sparring in the nude. Such glorious display of raw, chiseled physique are reserved for the intergalactic troll impics. Uh, no, you get that. Mostly we're wondering if it meant the loser's head being exhibited on a pike or some other bloodthirsty nonsense. Do not denigrate this noble sport of the claims of savagery. Thirdly, you're getting the sense that she's going to be playing the heel, yeah? The what? Ah, you explain that in your own cultural equivalent of muscular theatre, performers generally fall into the category of face or heel, wherein the face is the rule-binding and sympathetic figure the audience is meant to root for, whereas the heel takes on a more aggressive and unlikable personality. Mate, have you met troll culture? <laughs> Dude, come on now. What part of my personality is unlikable? Yeah, she's great. Do you dare suggest, sister? That the audience won't be roaring in thunderous applause and admiration as I conquer yet another pitiful foe. Ah, uh, you tell her, you know, she can be both the face and the heel, and you'll just be subjugated under my heel. Ah, uh, yes, exactly. Hey, Mula, trying time's over. You're up. She jerks her head back at you and silently marches out of the room. You begin to follow, and the promoter directs you to the entrance on the other side of the arena. You wait nervously for your cue to enter. Well, folks, we've had some technical difficulties, but here comes the match you've all been waiting for. Wearing the belt of champions and a leg of her own design, she's ready to gut the competition. A paragon of power, a lady of legwork, a true blue rough and later in the making. Clap those hands and activate your screech devices. It's Nikki Mula! Nikkei approaches the cage to thunderous applause, raising her arms and soaking in all the praise. She flexes and poses as the audience throws glasses of milk at her, which shatter uselessly around her steely frame. Uh, this appears to be a common ritual for her. She steps through one of the cage doors and slams shut behind her, locking tight. With her arms crossed and her teeth firmly gritted, she awaits you. As the announcer begins a new intro speech, you step forward. And in the other corner, frail in stature, weak in knees, wearing a perpetual look of befuddlement, we have some messed up low blood alien! How has this absurd mockery of life not been called yet? Perhaps only so fate could lead them to their thrash get the bloodthirsty hands and barbed foot of the Grand Nicky! A decent portion of the crowd boos at you during your approach, which you find unsurprising. You have to dodge a hail of old boots and rotten fruit. Somebody throws an entire piano at you. Relatively unfazed, you enter the ring and hear the door closing behind you. So, you've come here, alien, to prove your kind superior to the unbreakable, unstoppable troll species. Ah, uh, yeah, you shout. Your kind is so superior to trolls. 
And you, their emissary. Does this creature look superior to you, my theater enthusiast? She turns to the audience, throwing out a hand in gesture to you. They boo. Is this sorry specimen the best its plan can offer? More boos. He counted that you came more than prepared to tackle the uh, mighty Arky. Yeah, that. So you claim to be prepared, but are you prepared to face these 24 inch slither noodles? She flexes so hard the announcer's sleeves explode. <laughs> oh, his explode. <laughs> That's what hello flex then. So be it. I'll crush you in a single blow. You're expecting a referee to start the match, but then it occurs to you that there is no referee. Somewhere in the distance, a bullhorn sounds, which is apparently the signal to begin. Without taking her eyes off you, Nika grabs the cage wall behind her and hoists herself up effortlessly, scaling in reverse until she reaches the top. The announcer is screaming something about this move called the Spark in Nikkei! Once he finishes, she finishes her ascension, Nikkei deftly leaps from the edge of the cage and spins down toward you. Her body twists and her eyes in multiple blindingly fast flips before her robotic leg comes slashing at you. You spend quite some time admiring her dazzling form before it occurs to you that you should probably move. You duck and roll forwards, feeling the point of her leg just barely graze your scalp. The announcer shouts, First Blood! as you feel a light trickle down the back of your neck. Some members of the crowd are booing, presumably because they just noticed the color of your blood. Between the neon lighting and distance, they probably just think it's a rust colored and not a mutant red. So at least you have that going for you. What you don't have going for you is the time to think about your next move, because Nikkei pivots on her heel and charges at you. This time, she's going for a more theatric throw. Two powerful hands grab you and lift you over her shoulder where you nearly gore yourself on one of her th horns in your struggle to escape. You plant two hands on her back and push hard, and you are delighted to find that her grip loosens and you go tumbling over her that back, landing with a clumsy stagger on your feet. You're not sure if she let you get away with that one for the sake of the show, or if you just slipped out of her sweat-soaked palms, but you're going to charitably assume the former. She turns to face you, grunting and baring her fangs. She charges, raining back a fist and then sending it barreling toward your fragile human nose. You leap out of the way, only narrow it dodging it. All you've done is avoid me, coward! Where's your killer instinct? Do I scare you? Are you low to face my true blue muscle-bound beauty? You take this as your cue to attack, and instead you run full tilt away from her. It isn't fear carrying you, you swear. Fool! There's no running away or hiding from Nicky Moolah! Stand and fight! She sprints toward you as you flee. The crowd is on tether hooks. Nobody knows what you're doing, least of all you. But you think you can pull something cool out of this? You leap at the cage wall, barely dodging the specks that line it, and use the slight amount of give it in the cha chain link wires to springboard you off. With an exuberant grin, you go flying toward her, arm held out for a classic clothesline maneuver, and then you collide with her arm, own arm, and whoop. We wake up later. When you wake up, you are lying on what appears to be an exercise mat. You can feel a telltale throbbing sensation in your face that indicates a black eye. The rest of you, thankfully, doesn't feel particularly hurt. Nearby, you can hear the huff and puff of exertion. You glance over and spot Nikkei training on one of those leg press machines you always saw in gyms but never had the courage to attempt to use. She's wearing an exercise outfit which, despite its vastly different purpose, looks almost exactly like the outfit she wore in the ring. It has all the functions a fitness aficionado would want. It's loose, it's breathable, and the artists don't have to draw a second set of sweats for it. As soon as you know this, she's, she notices you're awake, she turns to you speak to you. She doesn't even stop her workout. You're finally awake, sister. Welcome to my hive. I've spent so much time, so much precious, valuable time, waiting for you to open your eyes. Oh god, how long have you been out? About 40 minutes. Oh, that's not long at all. Ew, that's not so bad, is it? Perhaps, but only when compared to your abysmal performance in the ring, to be knocked out cold by your own attack. Wretched. I am an impossible foe to conquer, and yet even a Rusty has towed me longer in the realm of mortal combat. You are weak, sister. Offensively so. She slams her foot forward with such velocity, the weight on the leg press goes flying off and leaves a dent in the floor. Grunting, she stands, takes a long swig from a bottle, and then approaches you with fire in her eyes. What do you have to say for yourself? Are uh, you scuttle backwards, proffering only a sheepish smile? You are, uh, sorry, I guess? Hmph. <laughs> I didn't bring here you to apologize. 
How about you here to see your heart ignite with the will to improve? You are not a worthless being. You have a flair for the theatrics, an appreciation of the sport, and a shining soul filled of only the most intricable determination. You could be so, so much more than you are, sister. Oh, I like her a lot. She's great. <laughs> I could make you so much more. She's a true sportsman. Cast your gaze around you and behold. Sports troll, I guess. The Bronzium. Bronzium. <laughs> Got these new names for stuff. You obediently cast say, said gaze around. This room is massive and little, but training and equipment as far as the eye can see. Much of it resembles exercise machines like the ones you had in Chips back on it, but there is plenty more that looks far more alien and deadly. A treadmill which appears to throw the runner into a vat of acid if they fall off. A series of swinging axes that could would look at home in the dungeon. Three different varieties of Iron Maiden, each more horrific than the last. This is presumably Nikkei's personal workout studio, but you could easily mistake it for a torture chamber. You wonder if Atata has ever considered a job as a personal trainer. Maybe you should bring it up with her. These are some... There are some who may be worthy of my expertise. It is here that I can forge them, just as I forge myself into beings of adamantine strength. The journey will be harsh. If you are made of weaker stuff than I believe, you will perish in agony. But if your core is strong and your will of iron, your wills, yours will be an unquenchable might. She extends a hand to you. Her jaw set. Oh man, that's super inspiring. Damn, she's good. Join me, sister, and together we shall ascend to Tomasen's heights of muscular perfection. There's a look in her eye that you have never seen before. One of hope, of faith. Her arm vibrates, muscles quaking. How could you say no? You can't say no to this. Do you take? Of course we do. Of course we take her hand. Come on now. She's she's like the most honest and admirable person we've met. Like she's pure of heart. <laughs> you take her hand, staring into those hopeful eyes. Oh, to see that deep sapphire blue filled with the glow of friendship. She squeezes your hand so tightly you feel your fingers fracturing. Excellent! I knew you had the spark. Now to make a flame. To grind and crush and pummel the flint until it bursts into a roaring blaze of strength. Today, I shall begin by testing your limits. Come! She leads you to the treadmill and the deep, bumbly, bubbling pit of acid directly behind it. Uh, you nervously step on. We're going to measure your speed and stamina. Run until you can run no longer. She starts up the machine. She gives you a nice, breezy jogging pace at first, but the threads quickly begin to whir away at a blindingly fast rate. You're spinning as hard as you can to keep up, holding desperately onto the arms of the treadmill. Come on, sister! Grit your teeth! Put some thrust sinew into it! If you're, not, okay, if you're not evacuating your acid track by the time you're done, you aren't trying hard enough. Sweat beads on your forehead as you push your legs to the limit, running like you've been chased by an angry drone. Your feet must be blurring like Sonic the fucking hedgehog by now. The treads are moving fa even faster and you can almost feel yourself slipping. Got to hold. Ah! You lose your grip and go flying backwards, narrowly grasping onto the edge of the spit and dangling into it, your toes singed by the acid. Ouch! You hoist yourself up over the edge and roll to the side, hissing. Nikki stands over you, chuckling her tongue, clucking her tongue. Top speed, 12 miles per hour. That's... that's good, right? For a bronze blood, next test. She takes you from machine to machine in quick succession, each time commenting your skill level. Your biceps are as terrible as Rusty's. Your lungs are gold at best. Your legs an unexpected cerulean all the while taunting you, encouraging you to push yourself further. The desiccated corpse of my ancestor could do better than this! <laughs> you struggle to deadlift a giant barbell made of dead monster skulls. Are you going to jack this May fluid all night long, or are you going to warm it up? You go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a punching bag that shoots sonic blasts at you whenever you hit it. Shape up or get ejected in the nearest solar execution barge! You sob as she forces you to do 30 minutes of freeform jazz exercise. Your jazz hands are terrible! By the time an hour is up, you are panting and huffing, desperate for a break. Nikkei finally relents. Your reward for staying alive thus far! Stay hydrated, sister! She tosses you one of those protein shaker bottles the gym buffs are always chugging from. You regard the mixture within curiously for a moment before throwing caution to the wind and gulping some down. When has imbibing alien sentence ever hurt you before? 
but when the flavor hits your taste buds, you almost wretch. Is this Gatorade mixed with milk? Nutritious and delicious! You keep chugging it. You need the liquids, foul they may be. All right, lactose break over. Let's continue. She next leads you over to one of those Iron Maidens. This one doesn't actually look spiked. It just has a blunt, bumpy surface on the inside. Get in! What? Get in, sister! Well, it's an Iron Maiden. How else are you supposed to use it? You reluctantly step inside the Iron Maiden and the doors clamp shut around you. This thing is far, far too tight for you and the bumps are pressing into you from all sides, threatening to squeeze you away into nothing. You groan and push back against the walls, desperately trying to keep them from crushing you into a little human waffle. Just when you think your strength is about to give out, the maiden opens. Pressure resistance, about olive level. These results are, surprisingly, adequate. Your potential continues to shine. Good work. Positive encouragement as well. Positive reinforcement. There we go. As well. That's that's how you do it. That's, I like her. I like her a lot. She's great. Nick is great. This halfway point seems to mark a change in her attitude. As you continue to just barely persevere through everything she throws at you, like a shake weight so powerful leaves you shuddering intermittently through the next uh, few exercises. Keep steady, sister! Don't lose heart on me now! A rowing machine that douses you with boiling water if you can't keep up the pace. Go, go, go! We'll make a Fushi medalist of you yet! Literally being chased around the field outside by a giant toothy monster. Don't you dare allow this thing to the satisfaction of tea feasting on your bones! After hours of this grueling work, you finally collapse. You think some of your bones are broken, your heartbeat is coming in quick and irregular pulses, and you can hardly breathe. Your vision blurs and shifts at the edges. God, you're amazed you haven't passed out yet. Get up! You glance weakly at, up at Nike, expecting her to be looking down at you with disdain. No, of course not. She sees that you're trying. Come on, that's, that's what she wants. That's all she wants. That you try. But instead, you see her crouching down, offering you her hand, wearing a smile. You take her hand and she pulls you up to your feet. <laughs> the look on her face now resembles pride. And when she claps a palm down on your shoulder, it only kind of hurts. You've done well, sister! I threw everything I had you, and you're soldiered on with held held high, even as your body broke beneath the weight. I have never seen such commitment, such strength of heart and soul, such dedication to the craft, such appreciation for the most righteous of pursuits. You are no mere workout partner. You are a workout friend. <laughs> a light blossoms inside you like the neighing of a horse. This feeling of power, of strength, of the bond between warriors. This is real and true. At this light, and this light will never, ever leave you. As you bask here in the satisfied and sweaty globe of good workout, you realize that planets, universes, dimensions, realities, powers, principalities, and cosmos come and go. But being swole as fuck is forever. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Fuck yeah, that's awesome. This was great. This is just pure positive reinforcement. All the way through. That's great. That's excellent. Oh, that's fantastic. I love Nikki. She's great. She's the best. Nikki is the best, straight up. No question. No doubts. No, nothing. Just absolutely perfect. <laughs> Get swole. <laughs> or something like that. Uh, I don't have that kind of determination, though. God, I'm weak. Oh, well. Anyway. Bye-bye.